Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I want to raise an important point in my view about the question of interaction between patients and doctors when it comes to COVID booster vaccines. Now, it may appear that we have gone beyond the pandemic, and there is no need for anybody to be concerned anymore. We're doing technically biannual COVID boosters, but it's important to recognize that we are doing this in the context of being in the midst of ongoing circulation of virus. That's very unusual. And if you think about it from the perspective of your flu vaccines that you would get every year, you would have an updated booster for the flu and it would occur sometime in about September or October prior to the flu season. This is very different in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic or epidemic, depending on what you are thinking about. And part of the reason why I'm raising this is because very often doctors may not necessarily be looking for that information when they are interacting with patients. And so it's very important for patients or relatives of patients, if they come in and they are unwell, as part of your routine information that you pass on to medical practitioners is that you will tell them about your past medical history, any previous surgeries. You'll mention any medication that you've, changed, you've been taking, especially new medication. And critically, I think this is one of those times where you should also bring forward the information with regards to vaccine boosters. Why let your doctor have to dig it out of you? One of the things that I've observed is that many patients don't think that it is relevant. So meaning that if they were on well, they wouldn't even think to volunteer that information because well, it's just a jab. I think that's very dangerous because in that context, nobody is aware of any kind of potential adverse effects. If you don't look for adverse effects, you won't find them. And so part of my journey here is to raise awareness as to what had happened in the past with regards to adverse events around vaccines. So we have here a paper, and this was done in 2021, Adverse Events Reported from COVID-19 Vaccine Trials. So this is February 2021, accepted in March and published in March, and it was from the Clinical Biochemists of India. And they were looking at multiple studies at the time to try and see if they could find clear patterns with regards to adverse effects, because adverse effects are normal and they're to be expected when you're doing any kind of trial. And so in the context of this happening, these um, scientists are looking out for them. And so they were going through multiple um, different um, presentations. You have here, this is with regards to this is with regards to here. They were looking at Sinovac. This one was a phase one, phase two. And I've highlighted in yellow the safety endpoint for both of the phases. That was the occurrence of adverse events within 28 days of vaccination in participants. And so this, was a, this is a standard practice. As I go down the line, it's showing you all the vaccine candidates that were used. Uh, this was the Sinovac, Sinopharm. AstraZeneca, uh, they had here's the Sputnik vaccine, they had here the Janssen J and J vaccine, they had Novax, uh, you can see down here, they had Moderna, they had the Pfizer vaccine, the Covaxin vaccine. So they covered all of the major vaccines in that process. And the thing I was looking for is what is standard practice with regards to the vaccines? How long do you tend to look out for adverse events? And so here we have, as I go through the paper, you can see here, uh, placebo group receptor, um, respectively zero, day zero to 28 days uh, cohort. And this was with, um, I can't remember which vaccine that was with, Sinopharm, I've highlighted it. This is a BBIBP. Uh, this was, again, a Chinese uh, vaccine. And again, 
all adverse events uh, encountered in phase one or mild to moderate in severity. No adverse drug reactions were reported within 28 days after vaccination. So again, you see this 28 days coming up because that's the average time frame that they would tend to see vaccine uh, adverse events. Again, with this one here, this is with the uh, adenovirus type vectored vaccines. So this could be AstraZeneca or J&J, &J, 28 days again. So you can see the pattern that seems to be evolving with regards to how they look at different vaccines, but they still largely stick within about 28 days. I'll share with you one other interesting thing that I stumbled into as I was looking at that. And I noticed that for the Moderna vaccine, when they did their testing in the phase one, there were 15 participants. The safety endpoint for occurrence was after seven days of each dose. I found that very strange. I, I couldn't explain why that was the, the case that that occurred, but I accepted that that probably was standard practice maybe for mRNA vaccines. I don't know if Pfizer was any different, but it stood out to me because seven days is a pretty short period of time if you are looking for adverse events. And so the essential point that I'm making here is that there is a responsibility to recognize that we are still technically in a clinical trial. We're doing unusual things. And within that framework, everyone is responsible to highlight to their clinicians that this is occurring or they have been vaccinated, I think, within 28 days of being unwell. Now, if you're in a car accident or you fall off a building, it may not be relevant, but you should still say it. Let your doctor make the judgment. Yes, you would give out all the medication. The fact that you are on an antihistamine and you fell off a bridge, well, it could be relevant if it made you drowsy. But the point being that your job is not to judge if it's relevant. Your job is to recognize that you had it and you inform your clinician as standard. What you would find, hopefully, is that if there were patterns that were evolving, that were easy to see, clinicians would start to pick up on it. Suppose they found a lot of people who came in with specific conditions were associated within 28 days of having a vaccine. It would make them think about it and probably go to look to see if there are any patterns. That could then be flagged up for big data. So it's not about trying to make a judgment as to whether or not it's relevant. It's just really information. And I think it's incumbent on everyone, patients, relatives, clinicians, to be aware of this, to think about this, but not need to have to dig for this information from everyone who is around them. Our job is not to make patients anxious, but just to get relevant information as we continue to work out how we go through this pandemic. Have a great evening.